Hello everyone, I'm Yao Fu, a first year PhD student at the University of Edinburgh. Today, I'm going to introduce ECHO, a large-scale deep learning recommender system with low latency model update. This is a joint work with Chijun, Li Yi, Xu Ri, Fen, Jun Yu, Yong Shen, and Hai Dong from Tencent, and Manke Luo from the University of Edinburgh, and Pierre from IIG. Nowadays, recommender systems play a key role in many internet services such as Netflix, Amazon, and TikTok. Well, we found two characteristics making the design of recommender systems unique from others. First, there are billions of global online users interacting with the system every moment. Even a small decline of user experience can lead to a significant loss of profit. To monitor user experience, there are a lot of service level objectives. For example, the user watching time on the recommended videos. State-of-the-art recommender systems use deep learning recommendation models consisting of large embedding tables that contain user and atom embeddings and dense neural networks such as multilayer perceptrons and transformers. These model parameters are stored in parameter servers which are replicated over geo-distributed data centers to serve users in low latency and also to be fault tolerant. Well, when a user request comes, the inference server gets related embedding atoms and the dense neural networks from parameter servers to give a recommendation. As you can find, the data access is highly sparse because only related embedding atoms and are involved each time despite the giant embedding tables. In production, there is new content, new users, and new events rising every moment. To keep high SLOs, we need to update the models. The update process starts by collecting user feedback as training data. There are training servers in the training data center that generate model updates based on collected data. Parameter servers need to disseminate model updates to all inference data centers over a wide area network so that users can benefit when using services next time. Traditionally, it's enough to update model every day or every few hours. But recently, recommender systems have a growing requirement for low latency model update for several reasons. First, in many applications such as WeChat, TikTok, and Instagram, users wish to watch recently published content. Recommender systems must, uh, must cooperate these newly uploaded content into embedding tables before recommending them. Besides, many users choose to log in as guests because of growing privacy concerns. And these protection rules such as GDPR allow users to reject non-essential data access. Recommender systems thus need to quickly learn anonymous users' interests before they find nothing fine and exit. What's more, algorithm designers wish to capture users' current interests by online training, which requests model parameters to be continuously updated. And the lower the update latency is, the better the SLOs will be. This makes us to think about a question. How to support updating terabyte to petabyte parameters in seconds? Existing industrial parameter servers use checkpoint broadcast, which first loads a model checkpoint from training parameter servers and validates it before broadcasting over a one. This can cost minutes to hours. Besides, there are also some research systems that train models in distributed data centers. Unfortunately, they suffer from relatively low SLOs because of partial gradient synchronization. We want to achieve low latency model updates while preserving SLOs. By sending model updates directly from training data center to inference data centers, this reduces several time consuming stages such as checkpoint, validation, and broadcast. However, coordinating billions of parameter updates in tens of data centers leads to a severe leader bottleneck on the training data center. Besides, 
Unstable one can be congested, delaying critical model updates for minutes. And finally, as we have eliminated the validation stage, both the model updates can reach inference servers that may make models give almost random predictions. We need to ensure SLOs won't be affected by this. To solve these challenges, we first design an efficient P2P model update that can utilize more network passes and efficiently find updated parameters. Besides, we design an SL-aware model update scheduler to protect SL-critical updates from network congestions. Finally, we design an inference model state manager to monitor inference SLOs and rollback models if needed. Now I'm going to introduce our first contribution. Echo manages model parameters as k-value pairs, and they are distributed into shards. Let's start from the simplest case, where there is only one shard. To enable disseminating model updates between any two parameter servers, we need to solve a basic problem. That is, how can parameter servers find updated newer updates from each other? For example, server B asks server A for newer model updates. A needs to find these updates and send them back to B. To achieve this, we adapt P2P synchronization, where each parameter has a version which tracks its update history, and each shard has a version vector to track all model updates in the shard. Let me give a very simple example to show how it works and why the naive adaptation is not efficient. Assume server B asks for newer model updates by sending VVB to A. A compares VVB with each of its parameters and only needs to send back the parameters that have newer uh, versions. Well, this process needs n times of comparison, where n is the number of parameters in a shard, which can be up to 100,000 in production. So the comparison is, not, uh, is very expensive. To solve this problem, we propose parameter update cache based on key observation. Model updates in deep learning recommender systems are very sparse and have temporal locality. Specifically, only a small portion of hot parameters are touched within a short time. Well, thus our idea is to cache these updated parameters. To enable this idea, we design a dominator version vector, DVV, the key point here is that DVV summarizes all parameters in the shard, but not in the cache. So when a synchronization request comes, server A first compares VVB with DVV. If DVV is not newer than VVB, which implies server B already knows everything not in the cache, A only needs to compare VVB with parameters in the cache. Otherwise, server B may not know something not in the cache. We need to further select parameter updates in the entire shard. Hitting the cache can reduce the comparison time from n to nr, which is the number of recently updated parameters. And uh, it is far less than the total number of parameters. In production, we found that the cache is very useful. By caching less than 0 0.2, 0.2% parameters, it can achieve over 99% hit ratio. Well, our second contribution is an SL-aware model update scheduler. According to our observation and discussion with algorithm designers, different model updates can have different impacts on SLOs, and only a few updates are SL-critical. So, uh, first and most importantly, newly created embedding items are critical because the lack of the newly created embedding items can lead to a model unavailable to the corresponding item or user as illustrated in this figure. Secondly, large gradients can cause significant impact on recommendation results, which has been confirmed by many previous works. And thirdly, there are popular models 
that serve most of the users. Their SLOs can largely dominate the overall profit of the company. However, once can be congested sometimes during which all model updates, including those SL critical model updates, can be delayed for several minutes. So we want to protect SLOs in such cases by prioritizing SLO critical model updates. Based on our observation, we use three metrics to calculate the update priority. First, update freshness is infinite when the parameter is created. Otherwise, it's zero. Secondly, within a model, update significance is calculated by normalized gradient magnitude. Please note here, uh, normalization is needed because echo serves multiple models together. And between models, update's priority is calculated by the percentage of inference requests. So the overall update, uh, sorry, the overall priority rule is shown in the blue box. For each model update, we calculate the priority and assign high priority to those top key updates. A background thread maintains statistics, such as the average gradient magnitude which I used during priority calculation. We also found several other metrics that could be useful, but they are model and scenario specific. So we allow algorithm designers to decide by user-defined functions. Next, I'm going to introduce our inference model state manager. While in production, thus the model updates are not rare for several reasons. First, there might be gradient overflow if we use low precision training. And besides, there could be outlier data which causes best gradients. And some best updates can be detrimental to SLOs. Traditionally, most best updates can be found during validation, which is bypassed to reduce model, uh, model update latency in our system. So we need to protect SLOs from past updates. To protect SLOs, our idea is to use baseline models as a reference of model healthiness, which are promised to be noise-free. Generally, less than 1% requests will be directed to the baseline models. We also design a model state manager to monitor SLOs or baseline models, as well as online models. An anomaly detection algorithm is used to determine the model's healthiness. If a model is believed to be corrupted, we first redirect inference requests to alternative models and then trigger a rollback. Finally, I'm going to show evaluation results of ECHO. We did testbed experiments on production workload and critical data site. The testbed cluster consists of 30 servers to emulate 10 data centers, and each data center has three servers. Echo is compared with Adam, a parameter server architecture that applies the two-phase commit protocol to achieve high-performance model update synchronization. On both production and the public data side, Echo outperforms Adam and can achieve up to seven times lower latency because ECHO can avoid leader bottleneck during dissemination and utilize more network passes with our accelerated P2P model update mechanism. Please note that on critical data site, ECHO achieves lower speed up compared with production workload because the critical data site has been pre-processed, after which uh, sparsity and locality are changed so it cannot reflect the real workload. Next, we analyze the breakdown latency. Each of our designs greatly reduces the latency, and totally, the latency is reduced over 29 times compared to naive version vector. Please also note that in the testbed experiment, there are less parameters in each shard, so the speed up of our cache is lower than we observed in production. 
Well, we have deployed Echo in our production clusters for over a year. Echo can achieve 2.4 second average update latency between day centers and less than one second within one day center. Online A-B test shows that SLOs can be improved by low latency model update up to over 3%. Please note that 3% SLO improvement is quite significant, considering that our applications serve over 1 billion users every day. Well, when network congestion happened, our SL-aware model update scheduler can avoid over 2% SL dropping. And our model state manager can roll back over 100 gigabytes parameters in only uh, 6.4 seconds. In conclusion, we design ECHO to enable low latency model update without compromising SLOs in large-scale deep learning recommender systems. ECHO has shown great improvement in recommendation services, and we believe it can benefit more applications in the future. Thank you for listening. I'm ready to take any questions.